हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू पावर प्लांट गुरु यूट्यूब चैनल फ्रेंड्स इन टुडे इस वीडियो वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट बॉलर फीड वाटर पंप व्हिच इज वेरी की इक्विपमेंट इन ऑल पावर प्लांट्स वी विल डिस्कस द की कॉन्सेप्ट्स एंड द फंडामेंटल बिहाइंड ईच एस्पेक्ट ऑफ द बॉलर फीड पंप फ्रेंड्स आई एम अ मैकेनिकल इंजीनियर विद अराउंड 20 इयर्स ऑफ एक्सपीरियंस एंड आई यूज्ड टू create small fundamental videos on uh, power plant uh, related uh, topics if you are interested to follow such content then uh, please subscribe to this channel so friend this is a typical image uh, which i have taken from uh, ksb's website cuts d2 ksb so this is a image where uh, you can see the entire boiler feed water pump set the this this box uh, here itself is a uh, motor and you can see on both the side of uh, this motor here is a small pump which is a booster pump and the other side there is a pump which is main bfp this is bfp so sorry there is a thing called uh, why this bfp and booster pump is required the first question is like this everybody asks this why when you have a boiler feed pump why don't you uh, create every pressure uh, from this only why you need bfp so there comes a concept of npsh so i'll explain that concept in detail but first uh, let's see the boiler feed water pump uh, key uh, aspects that there is a deaerator in the plant from deaerator the water come to boiler feed pump and then the boiler feed pump create a high pressure which is required at the boiler level so boiler feed pump take suction from deaerator which is a low pressure uh, equipment and then create high pressure which is delivered to the boiler and it feeds required uh, amount of water which is required to generate steam from boiler and let's say you are generating steam at 105 106 bar then there has to be little higher pressure at discharge of bfp so that it can travel from bfp to boiler boiler economizer or the steam drum so at boiler feed pump you'll have around uh, 10 15 kg extra pressure so that uh, along with all the losses water from bfp can reach to economizer and the, the steam drum section so let us discuss first about this booster pump so friend this is a booster pump booster pump takes suction from deaerator and discharge high pressure water to boiler feed pump suction so this is a double suction type booster pump where you have water coming in from these two sides and uh, these are uh, impellers i and then your pressure uh, water travel from inside to this uh, opening and this is a high pressure water which comes out from this discharge casing so this is how the boiler uh, feed pump booster pump works there may be single suction type also it depends upon the type and the requirement of pump so this pump discharge pressure to boiler feed pump suction and now the question is why we need this pump why only boiler feed pump is not sufficient to discharge the required amount of pressure so to understand this there is a concept required of npsh so let us understand that concept of npsh in detail so friends uh, npsh is net positive suction head that means whatever is the suction pressure at this point of time uh, sorry this point it boiler impel uh, feed pump impellers i so if you imagine 
pump where the shaft is rotating at a angular speed in this way and there is a high pressure at this discharge at the impeller of outlet high pressure so this impeller must be sucking the high uh, the pressure coming from this uh, side so here by this action the pressure at this point which is called i of the impeller the pressure goes little lower from this point of whatever is there so here is the static pressure at the whatever you get from deaerator so this pressure is a static head whatever coming from deaerator and now because of this negative uh, phenomena negative pressure phenomena created at the eye of impeller the pressure reduces so it is explained in this uh, chart if you see whatever is the uh, suction pressure which is coming from deaerator or any head at uh, the inlet of pump but at i uh, that impeller i the pressure reduces and then again at discharge the pressure is at high so every centrifugal pump has to follow this phenomenon so let's say in this process whatever is your pressure let's say p1 is pressure here and p1 is such that that after reduction at impellers i the p2 is lower than p lower than vapor pressure so what will happen there will be lot of vaporization happening here lot of bubble formation would be there so what will happen these bubble will travel and collapse in the pumps area <laughs> then you will see lot of uh, pitting actions here here in the section pipe or the uh, discharge pipe area this area a lot of pitting pitting actions you will see so if we have to get rid of of uh, this pitting phenomena which is very harmful to the equipment what is the alternative so there is one simple alternative that you increase this pressure instead of this p1 you go to some p1 dash now if you increase this p1 dash the inlet pressure at boiler feet then what will happen the pressure will fall it will fall but it will not fall beyond your vapor pressure there will be a sufficient margin so in this phenomena your p2 dash pressure is higher than the vapor pressure of that liquid so cavitation is not happening if cavitation is not happening there your equipment is safe so that is how this pump is designed in such a way that you have to keep somewhat pressure higher so that the minimum pressure at impellers i is more than your vapor pressure and th this is also a very important concept to understand why deaerators are kept at height and to a what height so those are kept at height just to maintain a net positive suction head at the pump's eye but in a pump where booster and boiler feed pump both are there booster and boiler feed pump both are there so what will be the requirement booster pump pressure whatever it generates it has to be more than bfp main pump npsh so if your bfp is having a high npsh then you have to install a booster pump just to meet its high npsh requirement and why it is having a high uh, npsh it is a uh, pump uh, basically construction when we have you have to deliver uh, deliver a very high volume of uh, water at very uh compact uh, with a very compact design pump and a very high pressure then there is a ultimately requirement of high npsh that is why 
this booster pump is coming into the picture hope you have understood the concept now this is a boiler feed pump in this case here it is not deaerator it is booster pump in this case so booster pump sends water to boiler feed pump suction and now it is a multi stage pump so you can see there are uh, uh, different impellers different impellers are mounted in series so that once the water goes inside this eye of impeller and discharge pressure is high then this high pressure is again diverted or directed to the next stage impeller and then this impeller discharges let's say it is p1 then here it will be p2 and definitely p2 is more than p1 and then p2 discharge pressure goes to this and here again uh, discharge higher discharge pressure p3 and now again p4 and final discharge pressure is p5 so something like that in each stage there will be increment of pressure reduction is impeller size casing size and this water bed uh, high pressure very high pressure will come out from the discharge casing and it will go to the economizer area in boiler feed pump so this is how the important uh, concept of uh, booster pump and psh and multi stage pump is there and now let us understand so this is a image of boiler feed pump discharge line so you see this discharge line is going to economizer but in between there is a arc arc is what automatic recirculation valve so why this valve is required let's say my boiler load is reduced so i cannot send this all water to boiler because there is a less requirement then this automatic recirculation what valve what it does it stops yeah, or reduces the water to this area and direct the water to minimum recirculation line which already goes to which area deaerator so if the boiler water requirement is there then this arc will be closed there will no water will be going to deaerator water will be going to economizer area and boiler area if there is a let's say you are starting the boiler and you don't have much requirement of water at that time but you cannot stop your boiler feed pump so you have to keep boiler feed pump running and then all water will go to deaerator area with this automatic recirculation valve and very less amount of water will be passing through the discharge line yeah so this is a concept of arc and it same happens in terms of your boiler load reduced to very low or boiler trip then uh, you need to keep this boiler feed pump on to maintain a boiler feed drum level so that your drum doesn't dry up and uh, there is a starvation of water so that time also water goes and uh, flows from minimum recirculation line and there is a stop from uh, water going to the main boiler right so this is a overall uh, concept of boiler feed pump i think this uh, video is uh, getting long so I, i will stop it here and uh, we have another video coming up for the balancing line so we will discuss the uh, balancing line in next video and in the meanwhile if you have any questions regarding this you can please ask in comment section and if you like the content please subscribe to the video thank you thank you very much for watching my video